is the media chat room where the celebrity headlines are talking. Front Street headline reports are confirming that Jeannie Mai and Jeezy are finally divorced. After a long drag out battle, it seems the two have finally agreed on the settlement terms of the prenuptial agreement as well as child support and custody arrangements for their daughter, Monica. Now we have been following this case ever since Jeezy filed for divorce. And I for one thought this divorce was gonna be smooth sailing because of Jeannie's admiration for Jeezy. At least that's what she depicted to the public. But it turned out to be battle of the exes in the courtroom. And we were able to get a little bit more insight as to what was happening in their marriage despite what was being put out in the tabloid and on Instagram by the couple. Based on the documents submitted to the court over time, we found something in the chocolate milk ain't clean and that fuss soup have a little bit too much going on. It's definitely a lot to get into because we're going to pick up where we last left off. And I'm going to give my opinion based off of information and belief as to what exactly happened during this marriage that cause a divorce so before we get into it i'm gonna need you to like and share this video with everyone that you know then subscribe to the channel so that you can become an official chatty patty lover and i promise you're gonna love it here and last but not least turn on your notification bell so that you know when we drop our next video or go live so in our latest update on the genie my versus genie divorce we learned that genie my started gatekeeping the baby because she had some type of fear or safety concern as it relates to monaco visiting her father jeezy due to the lack of him safeguarding his weapons but in addition to that genie also reported that jeezy was potentially physically abusing her now remember chatty patty all this came out into the courtroom because jeezy at one point throughout the divorce tried to file for full-time custody of monaco the child that the two of them actually shared together if you need a refresher make sure that you go ahead and check out our jeezy and genie my divorce playlist well anyway due to the drake and kendrick lamar b as well as us following the diddler's ding dong we were never able to report that jeezy actually responded to these claims genie made saying that all the allegations she made about him physically abusing her and being irresponsible with weapons were totally false he actually gave an account of many of the things she spoke of in the file documents like naming her as an aggressor in the relationship recalling times when she actually slapped him with open hands if she did not agree with things that were stated by him throughout the relationship also exhibiting text to the court that he couldn't have been as bad as Jeannie Mai was painting him to be because despite him telling her he would file for divorce if their marriage didn't improve she just wanted to have another baby for him taking it upon herself to contact the IVF doctor as well as track her ovulation trying to prove to the court there's no way he could have been an abusive husband and neglectful father as she was trying to have another baby also submitting evidence of text with her expressing the depth of her love for him if you want the full context for what was happening in the messages make sure you go check out chronicle speaks because she does read through a lot of the documents even though it was over 100 pages submitted these messages is when he tries to take a step back from her after she starts to openly flirt with another man in his presence while giving him her phone number not even a year into their marriage she says i get that you aren't in a good space with me i hate it and it hurts very much especially when you told me and i agree that we should be friends even when we have turmoil i am trying to stay out of your way so tell me how i can do that and give you your space even when i don't understand how this rumor just plummeted us back to square one underneath the pile of everything you are holding against me from three years ago i just ask please don't ignore me or further break the spirit in our home our love made this household it's literally like turning off the heat in every room why would our own kids want to be here one home jay one home is what we're fighting for you and i make that home i get that you need space and peace and i deeply respect your ask this situation will soon pass what i am doing to fix myself has begun so in this time how can i give you the space you need without us living like strangers or ignoring simple things like text remember our wishes when we were in a good space it shouldn't all be thrown away because of these challenging moments we deserve to give the positive sides of ourselves what they wished for. Our actions in between these moments feed the love we are fighting to have. Here is my new number. Although I brought it up on myself, it was a very humbling process to see how accessible I was to everyone around me. All said, I have learned in each inconvenience around this continues to punish me. Please see this one mistake as the child in me 
who've learned a very hard lesson to become the wife and woman she is today. Now here's some text messages that follows the Rick's Carton event, which she filed in a document stating that she was physically abused, saying that Jeezy pushed her down the stairs. However, that portion of the story was not reported by the employee who wrote up this incident report. So a few days later, she texts him and says, every time we are in the same vibration, we make sense. Our whole story makes sense. Our journeys before us make sense. There is never a doubt except why we didn't meet earlier. When we are one, let's take the time to back up and adjust our lenses of who we are to one another. I am not just your wife. You are not just my husband. I have no right to harm you or treat you any less than you deserve. And same you to me. The same way I can't harm my Nicole because she isn't just mine. There's a lot we have to learn. And I really believe that if we can get it down, we will be on the way to our greatest self we have never experienced before. I ask that we both need accountability. I just realized we are each other's accountability. Like your friend Barry said, if one of us fail, we both lose the greatest thing he gifted to us. He can also take it away. Thank you for taking such sweet care of me and us. My wounds feel comforted. I hope I tend to yours the same way you need to. I love you, Jay. Now here's a message she sent to him the following day. I am willing and defiant to heal my love. That I can promise on my daughters, my soul, my family. I just can't do it alone. And I don't want to either. Meeting you on November 28 changed my life forever. You taught me love. You showed me a version of marriage I gave up on. How I know you are my heir is that I get up needing to breathe you and fall asleep needing to feel you every single day. I am refraining from calling you now. That's how much I miss my king. You would never get anything done if I really carried on about you the way I feel. I love you, Jay, in every action of my word, and I want to show you every day we have. He also showed a gift that Jeannie Mai gifted him, saying that he was a great dad, while explaining instances that continue to happen, ultimately leading him to make the decision to file for a divorce. After Jeannie Mai allegedly admitted that while taking a bath with their younger child, she considered drowning herself and their daughter. So Chatty Patty, Jesus said, you could call me what you want, but no judge is about to call out 25 to life on me for off and my wife and daughter and Jeezy must have very well understood the play and narratives that she potentially was trying to create through her erratic behaviors allegedly because in the latest documents filed with the court both parties submitted letters from character witnesses and based off the letter submitted from Jeannie's best friend Allison Bridge Jeannie told her if something was to ever happen to her aka somebody found her unalive it was Jeezy who did it order in the court but Chatty Patty, I done got way ahead of myself. I was just trying to get everybody to pick up what young Jesus was trying to put down. But let me back up to what else was unveiled through Jesus' response to Jeannie's allegations of him being an irresponsible father and abusive husband. We found one of the reasons Jeezy Mida was seeking primary custody of Monaco was due to some of the actions of Jeannie's mom, Mama Mai, who's very much a part of Jeannie's support system when it comes to caring for Monaco, especially because Jeannie is an entertainer with a non-traditional work schedule. Well, Jeezy had some concern of other people caring for my Nicole when Jeannie Mai is not present, especially Mama Mai. Because when she's sharing pictures with Jeannie and Jeezy, the pictures become a little bit questionable. Just like in this exhibit, showcasing Mama Mai allowing the baby to take pictures with alcohol. video of her covering her face with plastic and allowing a stranger who looks like Jesus replica to hold coddle and watch the baby Monaco on a flight to Los Angeles. I mean when I tell you Jesus was spilling his gut literally clean up on our four. He was putting it all out there so that his actions can be known. Dispelling all the lies and narratives put out there especially those created by Jeannie with her saying that he blindsided her by filing for a divorce. Um, at the time when I found out you know, at the same time as the rest of the world that yeah. my marriage was ending in divorce, I was gutted. Jesus stated that he completed the verification for divorce in June and informed Jeannie if things did not change within a matter of 90 days, then he would go through with the divorce, which is when she became obsessed with trying to have another baby. The text that he submitted shows that they had some type of conversation, but ultimately decided to still move forward. And he wanted to collaborate with her so that they can come up with a joint statement that would be released to the public on both of their behalf. She saw and read the text, however, she did not respond until she started to see media outlets report on the story. So all these exhibits and documentation were filed a month ago. And now here we are a month later after the judge has granted their divorce. Now for the sake of privacy, the records have been sealed. However, some documents are public records, such as their character witness statements. 
Now, again, if you want to break down and listen to all the statements that were filed, make sure that you go to Chronicle Speaks. I just want to extract some information that I found rather interesting. Again, like Jeannie Maya mentioned to her best friend, Allison, that if she was found unalive, the person who did it was going to be Jeezy. And again, when it's paired with the actual final straw for him filing for a divorce, which was because she made the statements that she wanted to off herself as well as their daughter, I think Jeezy definitely started to pick up on some of her behavior patterns and possibly some lying traits. Now, in no way am I saying that she's lying, but when you look at things in black and white, it starts to read some questions. Let's check out this other statement submitted by a woman named Lysia Selhi Asahai who says her fiance was a Jeezy replica on the plane to LA. And she's writing a character statement on behalf of Mama Mai to explain what happened on the plane that day. Now the first thing I noticed is that she gave her full name. And although she offered the position of their seating on the plane, she did not mention the name of her fiance, allegedly, who's actually in the picture holding Monaco. Now in the statement she says that Monaco was drawn to her fiance because he looked so much like her dad, which is actually believable. But then Monaco started cutting up and they had to help comfort the baby. And she was drawn to their Hermes blanket, which is a blanket that Jeezy owns. But first of all, look at the direction Monaco is facing. Nowhere near the blanket. Two, the lady in the picture seemed so distant from Monaco and her alleged fiance. And three, they had not one picture of Monaco acting up. Looks like there was no tear or tantrums in sight. And in the letter, they claim that this was a brief encounter. However, him and Monaco go from being awake to asleep. In the picture that I'm inclined to believe that he had her for at least 30 minutes. Now, after reading and seeing everything for myself, I'm inclined to believe that Jeannie Mai may have some manipulation traits. And using the media to create false narratives, which were stated by her ex-husband Freddie and his new wife. Now, another person who claims that Jeannie has some manipulation tactics that she uses is Jeezy's ex-fiancee, Mahi, who surprisingly wrote a character witness statement on Jeezy's behalf, despite him saying that she was jealous of Jeannie Maya back in 2020. But she depicted Jeezy as a loving, doting father, who she has a great co-parenting relationship with. While Jeannie, on the other hand, actually trying to manipulate their daughter Amra against her being that she's a more stricter parent and Jeannie wanted to be seen as a fun stepmom allowing her to do things against her parenting and openly talking about inappropriate subjects but she also claimed that Jeannie Mai contacted Amra's therapist making claims that she was physically abusing her daughter. And based off the information gathered by the doctor, Jeannie Mai was trying to build a case against Mai. Now she was a little heavy with the our daughters and them text messages to Jeezy. I'm just saying. Now despite Jeannie Mai being obsessed with her daughter, she never one time reached out to Maui to introduce herself. At no time during the dating phase or marital phase. However, in December of 2023, Jeannie reached out to her, letting her know that she was a good mom and wanted her to be able to remain in contact being that their daughters are actually sisters. And finding out that Jeannie has always had her contact information for emergency purposes. Now, Chatty Patty, this case was a hot ass mess. And it actually had me looking at Jeannie kind of side eye, making a lot of information that was said about Jeannie seemingly true. I'm Vietnamese, and I actually know Je Jeannie Mai. We traveled to Vietnam together. Mm -hmm. Not a friend. In fact, I have a lot of dirt uh, on it. She, she went to Vietnam with a group um, where she claimed that she was helping the poor Vietnamese. Um, and my, my friends who are co-friends with her wanted to travel and, and looked at uh, the different um, nonprofit organization of which she, she uh, that, that's how we had the interaction. But it turned out that she went back to the, to the U.S. and claimed that she was, she was uh, donating to all of these organizations, which she did not. It was a marketing ploy. Like I said, she ingests and digest the her environment extremely well. Why do you think uh, Jeezy filed for divorce? Oh, because she, he really saw it, her her true self. And what she said definitely is seeming to be the case. The text messages submitted by Jeezy seemed like she was on some type of poetic high and wanted to relate to him on some type of philosophical yet spiritual level, maybe because he was a rapper. And although she tries to be that person through words, because it's not who she genuinely was, she always failed to show up that way. And with Jeezy being in a different place in his life, someone trying to be seen as a businessman, addressing and healing from past trauma, wanting to build with someone who understood what 
what it's like to be in the industry, yet dedicate time and efforts to family while understanding the structure of a family. He went all in and started to become in tune once he had already become married, leaving himself the question, who the F did I marry? Now, Chatty Patties, it's time to hop in those comments. Let me know all your thoughts as it relates to this story. Are you glad they finally reached some type of agreement so that they can both move on with their lives? And do you think Jeannie was surprised to see all the information that Jesus submitted to the court, making her look like a scorned and bitter woman? And do you believe she tapped out when she did because it could have started to hurt her image? And what about Jeezy? Do you think that this marriage was a terrifying experience for him? Do you think Jeannie actually told him that she wanted to off herself as well as Monaco? And that was his actual sign to get out? This headline had a lot of moving pieces, so make sure you definitely let me know all your opinions because I can't wait to park in those comments. And before you go, make sure that you like and share this video with everyone that you know. Then subscribe to the channel so that you can become an official Chatty Patty lover. And I promise you're going to love it here. And last but not least, turn on your notification bell so that you know when we drop our next video or go live. Now, Chatty Patty, you already know how I do it. First, I'm heading to the comments to see what you had to say. Then it's back to scrubbing the headline so that I could bring you another video. So that's going to be all for now. And until next time, bye-bye.